then yep, you just kind of wave, move back, make sure the cat's not behind me so I don't roll her, her tail over, get some proper distance, and say, hey folks, I am the one, the only Hobo Tom, and right now, again, so there's my notes, I'm taking a picture of a picture because I'm making my, I'm doing this in preparation for my two year anniversary video. Oh. I think that was my cat that just kind of snuck on by. There she is. She's rubbing against stuff. That's always fun to see. I don't know. This room is a mess. It has to be cleaned up soon. Eventually, she'll just make her way there. There's her little bed right there, and she'll normally just kind of watch me. But that's okay. So, oh, wait a second. Why am I doing this, you ask? I'm doing this because this week is my two-year celebration. I've been on YouTube for two years. Um, probably on Thursday. Thursday morning, yeah, probably Wednesday night. I don't know. I might even get this done tomorrow. You never know. But probably sometime I'll be doing this. So actually, I'm gonna turn this off. So uh, 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 bye for now, everyone. And seriously, let's, let's let's do this a little bit more professionally. That's my two year. Charge this up because the battery gets zonked all the time. But this is my two year anniversary here on YouTube. With the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I'll probably go into a little bit more about that later. But I'm not here to talk about that. As you witnessed. Uh, to answer the one person's question. Yes, there was my old ex-girlfriend. Uh, we split up a while ago. But I I used to use that bump a lot. I think once we split up, I said, ah, no more bump. But because this is a two-year anniversary show, all week long you're going to get that bump. Probably into, I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. But I'll talk about that later when I get into the schedule. I'm not here to talk about that, though. I'm here to mention some names, folks. Uh, I'd like to thank the elitist. Yes, sir. Um, I think what I said about Revolution was kind of standard. Um, I think most people kind of agreed with me. Uh, the one issue I think that I might have taken up with others is the woman's match. Some people thought the woman's match was, was good. Yeah. Uh, not, not so good by Mike. Oh, let's see her. Yep. And also, because I do want to doc, I, I'm trying to document stuff too. So the elitist, uh, generally, if I forget. I have my other menu up here. I put this up there. And I can kind of see. It's like, okay. I have to go to wrestling. Well, there we go. This is how I kind of keep track. And I'll write it down. So, the latest. You so are so good. You won the match twice. Because you earned this six count.
everybody knows an angry fighter is a sloppy fighter. So he goes for some hair. Come with a leg hook. Not enough. Yeah, I kind of stopped for seven seconds because that's kind of my cue to put in video. Then, XMR Track. You, sir, again, because you make those videos, which I will have to check out, I did uh, subscribe. So, yep, well, that's how I do that. So, so let me get to the business of this now. Maybe turn you off. Plug you back in. No camera should be done. So again, Exmer tracks. You sir are definitely a master of the air guitar and air drums. Then Trap Drip, I think you were curious about being YouTube friends. I have no idea how you do that. Um, I don't mind that. I know Bumps looks and I, when we have a chance, and, and when he's watching wrestling and he sometimes watches my wrestling show, uh, we do converse about more social things. Uh, mainly the fact that he's over in Bonnie Old England, in, in Wales. And I'm here across the pond here in Florida. I wouldn't say we're friends, but I, I would say we're decent acquaintances. So I'm not adverse to, to doing that on YouTube. Um, if, you, if there's some special button, because I did subscribe to your webpage. Again, I do have to check out some of the music later. Um, I might have to ask you if I can use some music. Because that would be really cool. That would help out my web page a little bit. It would give me, it'd give me some production value. Which I know it, my web, which my, I know my YouTube site so desperately needs. Because generally, if I have to sing songs, I have to keep under six seconds, or I start singing myself, and six seconds is too short. And me singing songs is, is just not good. So I might have to ask you if I can steal some of your stuff. But you, sir. Because again, you are a musical genius. You, sir, listening to that briefcase boombox. That's all the shout outs. Who are you? I don't know why I wrote that down, but. Oh, yeah. Hi Logan. Again, I always shout out to people in in the uh, who have signs. And there's someone there with a busted open sign. Whoa. Let's start off the show. Um, for Raw, this was I was shocked. This is one of those things. Anything you can do, um, I can make mine good at least. Because this was the Raw after the AEW 
amazing pay-per-view, uh, AEW Revolution. Again, minus the one match, that card was stacked. Uh, WWE did a really good job coming back because I thought it was a fun show. Uh, it actually went really quick. Show opens up with Brock Lesnar. Uh, Paul Heyman, of course, talks, cut, calls Drew a bitch. And, of course, once he called Drew McIntyre a bitch, uh, it's time for Drew to come out. Uh, Drew Claymore's Brock Lesnar in the ring. And then as he leaves, Brock Lesnar collects himself. He's like, the hell just happened to me? And he got Claymore kicked a second time on the ramp. People cheered that, and of course, there's a point to the WrestleMania sign. There is no WrestleMania sign. I'm just pointing. So that was a pretty fun opening segment. That was a, that was a good way to introduce the show. Then the first match of the night was the Street Profits taking on Murphy and Seth Rollins. Street Profits cut their normal promo. That's the Monday Night Pariah, which is good. And Murph the Smurf. Lisa gives him a first and last name. And I can close that stuff up now. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's right. Uh, of course, Murphy and Seth Rollins come out. They get in the ring and they just jump the Street Profits. Very heel thing to do. Uh, Ford tried to come back. He, he tried to dive. He got tossed right into I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Maybe in a year that'll get dull, but not yet. Uh, then you have Dawkins. Again, it's a near handicap match for a while. Two on one. It's Dawkins taking on Murphy and Seth Rollins. Uh, he eventually does tag in Ford for the hot tag. Ford starts going crazy. He's doing flippy stuff all over the place, which is amazing. He did a double crossbody, both onto Murphy and Seth Rollins. Uh, but then eventually Seth Rollins, being the, the dastardly heel he is, eventually buckle bombs him, and, and Murphy kicks him. I like that heel tag team combination work. That's what they used to do in the old NWA. It's what they used to do in the old WWF. It's what they used to do in AWA. I like that. I like it when the heels can actually communicate. They put their foot up instead of using the, the nice, cushiony, pillowy, soft turnbuckle. I'm sure the foot is soft, but it's not as soft as a turnbuckle. Or at least it gives the illusion of being harder than the turnbuckle. And there was some one terrible miscue about some like... Because it was supposed to be a buckle bomb to a kick again, but Seth got Huracrana into a kick. Uh, from there forward... He just he went up to the top and Seth just like shoved him off the top rope. That was a that was a nasty looking thing. AOP comes to the ringside because they want to beat him up. But you know what? Ref smart. AOP, you're out of here. They get tossed. And then in the whole debacle, Kevin Owens. Fight Owens fight. Oh wait. Stun Owens. Stun. Comes in, hits the stunner on I think Murphy eats the pin. Uh, Dawkins takes out... Oh, no. Uh, it's the center on Seth. Dawkins takes out Murphy. There's a frog splash onto Seth. And we have new champions! I like that. They're, they're, I don't mind if they hot potato the belt. As long as it's with valid teams, it gives them purpose. Again, this has been a story that's been developing. I like this. I'll tell you what. This is a surf and turf match. Uh, so that was really fun. And yes, you are on TV. Yeah, that was a busted open sign. And then and then Jerry the King Lauder starts like he mentioned like the walk on water reference from the Bible. Again, this this whole Monday Night Messiah. So let's just just go away. Uh, that's not something I like. Uh, then we had the Seth and Buddy interview at the back. And I like the fact that, that he got called Chuck on a spot. And poor Charlie Cruz, so she's wearing like a blouse now. She has dull points. And then the king, uh, then Seth, and then no, the Seth said, said we're going to crucify Owens. Listen, folks, crucifixion was a 
horrible way to go. Unlike the Bible, crucif the death by crucifixion took like if the Romans really want to, like it would take like take like a good ten to fifteen days. Because the way you die by crucifixion is that you die really by lung asphyxiation. Your upper body, your chest, abdominal sheath, tricep, bicep, deltoids, they're not built to carry your body weight. Uh, it's very simple anatomy and physiology. Your major weight-bearing bones are your femurs and your pelvic bone. Those are weight bearing bone. Sternum, the rib cage, shoulder blades, not weight bearing bones. Yes, yes, yes. People are going to say, oh, you can, you can walk on your hands. Yeah. You don't walk on your hands for long distances. If you really think about it, I mean, you might walk on your hands across like a 20 by 20 mat. Or if you're a really good athlete, yeah, you can maybe walk a football field or so on your hands. Again, really good athletes trained for that. Their arm, their their deltoids are burning after that. So the Romans used to, and then the Romans would actually feed and water you. You die by asphyxiation, um, unless they did other mean, cruel stuff to you. Yeah, it was like a horrible way to die. I think it was, again, that weird 10 to 15 day, if they really wanted to prolong it, they would. Uh, of course, the Christ died. He was beaten first. He was stabbed then. Uh, just physically broken and beaten down. So again, there was there were other there were other things. But if the Romans really wanted to keep him alive, they'd keep him alive. But they're just like, nope, we're we're done with this. We want to get things over with. Again, probably more. Realistic representation of crucifixion is in the original Spartacus, because yeah, like they would line the roads with people, and and they actually would put their crimes above them. Again, R N R N R N I wait I R N I yeah yes no I N R I I'm sorry, I-N-R-I, Asus Nazarii Rex Durum, uh, Jesus, of Na Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. That was, that was the formal charge. Um, if, if you were a, a murderer, it would say murderer. If you were a thief, it would say thief. It would tell you your crime. It's that warning, do not do this in my city. So the crucifixion rule. Again, walking on water, this whole Monday Night Messiah thing is... I don't, some people love it. Some some people don't like it. I'm one of those people that don't like it. Just especially when they're getting way too deep and taking it way too serious. Again, I already posted a video about that. I'm surprised I didn't receive any flack about that. Uh, but then the next match uh, was Ricochet taking on Rick Moss for the 24/7 champion. And who are you? Because I think they were chanting that because Rick Moss is like, do you know who I am? They're like, who are you? Listen, if you're going to incite the crowd to, to say something, trust me, there are ways to do it. Rick Moss knows how to do that. Uh, Ricochet is faster, smarter, really better. Faster, smarter, better, harder. Faster, smarter, better, harder. Faster, smarter, better, harder. Oh, wait. That's a, that's a Daft Punk tune almost. Um, again, you would think Ricochet would be able to wreck Riddick Moss because he used to wreck him in NXT pretty easily. But Moss definitely is a stronger person. Uh, you can definitely tell the musculature is different. Uh, he, Riddick Moss has more musculature. He, he uses that. Uh, he picked up Ricochet and just ragdolled him to the outside. Oh, wow. that That was vicious. And then ended with some like kind of weird, like neck breaker thing. And yeah, it was a relatively quick match too. Uh, Riddick Moss went over. He still retains the twenty four seven belt. It wasn't bad. It was a twenty. It was it was an actual match. 
the 24-7 championship. Uh, Ricochet still, for the most part, can do no wrong. Rick Moss is actually getting pretty good. This was a cheeseburger match. And I want to know, will Aleister Black inherit the powers of darkness from the Undertaker? But, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, AJ Styles, he starts cutting a promo. He was playing to the what chance that was, that was amazing. Um, and then he brought up the thing that uh, Mark Wahlberg, also known as Marky Mark, uh, said he shouldn't face the Undertaker. And he's like, I have Marky Mark telling me what to do. But of course, in his southern drawl, it just sounds so ridiculous. Of course, the crowd's going to start to chant, Marky Mark, Marky Mark. I, I swear he said, you bunch of smart marks. Oh, making a reference to the reference fans. That's great, though. AJ Styles, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. AJ Styles is so good. Uh, so it starts off, uh, Carl Anderson's there. That's, that's great. Um, and AJ Styles is supposed to take on Aleister Black, but no, in the contract. Again, always read the contract. Uh, it says Aleister Black will face AJ Styles if he can defeat first Carl Anderson. It's Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson. Um, he starts to beat up Aleister Black. Miguel's is a distraction, and he eats a baseball slide for his efforts. Uh, Carl Anderson has, again, like the second best spine buster. The reason is the only person with the best spine buster right now is Robert Roode or Bobby Roode. Second best spine buster is definitely Carl Anderson. Uh, I think the weakest spine buster is Charlotte. Shane is, it's okay, it's a spine buster. I mean, there's not that much stank on it, but it looks better than Charlotte's. It's not quite a Robert Roode spine buster, though. So Carl Anderson, again, he has a spine buster, goes right into a headlock. Uh, when Alistair Black makes a comeback, he has an acai moonsault. Oh, that's so fun to see. Second rope moonsault inside the ring. And then he hit this blast max black, on black ass. And a Carl Anderson loses. I'll tell you what, Alistair Black wins. This was a fun match. Carl Anderson, I can see why they're saying that he's one of the best workers around. This was a Cheeseburger match. Then also in the contract, again, always read the fine line. Uh, in order for Alistair Black to get his match with AJ Styles, he had to go through Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows jumps from right from behind. Uh, Alistair Black hits three big boots. Stuns Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows, however, being the bigger man, hits one big boot, knocks Alistair Black down. And then he started to get on him. Uh, did the 12 to 6 elbows to the chest or clavicle. Uh, applies the chin lock. He just tosses Alistair Black out of the ring. Uh, Alistair Black eventually does beat the 10 count, though. Again, there was a vicious kick by Alistair Black. Ouch. How he manages to pull those kicks. And not like hurt himself or drastically hurt someone else. Oh yeah, by the way, I think uh, Ricochet I think got a bloody lip or something. So you see, like you saw a little bright red, like right around the lip. I'm sure that happens all the time. Uh, again, he could have bit his lip, and that that's probably not because probably the least of his issues. But I actually do like the fact that Ricochet is wearing trunks. It looks better than the whole. Some reason. Uh, I think that's what he used to wear in New Japan. But back to this match. Uh, Luke Gallows eventually just just beats on Aleister Black in the corner. And unfortunately, he did not break it when the ref counted five. He can go to the four count. I know the rules, referee. I have until five. You said four. However, he eventually got to the five. The referee said, okay, no, you're not paying any attention. You're, you're DQ'd. And then at that point, Carl Anderson jumped in the ring, and they hit the magic killer. Oh, it's so nice to see a finishing move. 
on Alistair Black. Alistair Black did win. Eh, it was a it was it was a good match. Again, having that DQ loss. I'm gonna upgrade this. This was, this was actually pretty fun still. This this was a cheeseburger match as well. Then we have AJ Styles. It's like, well, you've fulfilled all the parts of the contract. AJ Styles terms comes in. Alistair Black, Alistair Black takes one big swing, misses. AJ laughs at him. Um, AJ starts again. He does. He, he can strike with any of them. He goes. He reverts but when he goes into striking mode. He reverts back to New Japan style AJ, which is still the best AJ. And this was good because this actually tells a story. Um, again, he the kicks by Alistair Black, but AJ counters for that snap backbreaker. Oh, and he hit the brain buster. AJ Styles has to be one of the safest workers. He is the only person allowed to drop people on their heads. Um, AJ Styles beats up, beats him up a little bit more. Hits the phenomenal forearm across the ring to Alistair Black. And then he does, oh, again, the story thing, because it's going to be AJ Styles taking on the under, Undertaker at WrestleMania, where AJ Styles is probably going to lose. But AJ Styles then takes the hands of Alex Blacks and folds them across his chest, just like they do when they bury you, just like the way the Undertaker typically pins people after the tombstone pile driver. He sits on his hands. AJ Styles poses, poses, ah. And he gets the win. This was really good, mainly because of the back and forth. AJ Styles and Alistair Black, they, they could, they, oh, please fight forever. Because that could be so good. Uh, next week, they're going to have a no DQ match. So that should be pretty interesting, too. AJ Styles, hope, goes to New Japan. AJ Styles, and I hope Alistair Black reverts back to Tommy Ends. Because that would be amazing. Because this, I'll tell you what was a surf and turf match. Mainly because of the storytelling, the foreshadowing, uh, what's going on with AJ, Aleister Black. AJ Styles on the few, I think he's the only one to beat him. But again, it took two other opponents to soften up Aleister Black to get to that point, though. And Charlie Caruso's back there with Ruby Riot. I don't like Ruby Riot's long hair. I like her with a short hair punk look. But hey, what the heck do I know? Look at look at my follicle situation. So with that, this leads to the next match. Um, again, I do prefer my Ruby Riot with her hair. It was Liv Morgan taking on Ruby Riot, and Sarah Logan was a guest referee. Because remember it. One time, all three of these women were a member of the riot. Uh, starts off really as a cat fight brawl. Uh, Liv Morgan still is really good. She's getting better. Uh, she just like that. Like that. It was a very personal match, hard hitting. Uh, Liv Morgan started to hit wrestling moves on Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot would just kind of strike her, just saying, oh, "Okay, you want to? You really want to wrestle now?" Um, eventually, Ruby Wright they get a couple near falls on Liv Morgan. She stares at Sarah Logan and says, no, go. She wants a quick count. Sarah's looking like, no, I'm going to call it right down the middle like a good ref should until Ruby Wright shoves Sarah Logan. Oh, Sarah Logan did not like that. Uh, then Liv Morgan with that uh, rolled up and got the pass count from Sarah Logan. Uh, Liv Morgan's happy. She wins. She defeats Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot's upset. She attacks Liv. She she goes after Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan knocks out Ruby Riot. Liv Morgan's happy. Yay! And then Sarah Logan knocked out Liv Morgan. So there is no more Riot Squad because Logan turns on everyone. It was it was a good serviceable match. I'll tell you what, it was, it was head and shoulders above anything AEW's ever put out. Well, almost ever put out with a women's match. The last AEW Dynamite women's match was amazing. 
the revolution match. But I'll tell you what, this was a good ham sandwich of a match. And then for some reason, there's a Jose, no way. Oh, wait, they were chanting Jose, no way. Wow. Uh, there was an edge recap before that, but then they were chanting Jose, no way. They got their lines screwed up. They're supposed to be chanting, no way. Jose, no way. Jose. So they're like chanting, Jose, no way. Jose, no way. I wonder who else picked up on that. Um, and then they finally showed what's in the cage, and this was a, it was a giant spider. So disappointing that this had to be the reveal. I mean, if that giant spider was crawling, if, like he's stuck. No way Jose's, or, or, or Jose, no way's arm in that cage, and this, like, a spider attached itself to him. That would have been impressive. This, not impressive. And you knew it was a robotic spider, even though it was moving. It's, it's just, no, why, why? It should have been a skunk. I was still hoping it's, I'm like, oh, wow, he's really going to bring a skunk out. And I always thought, like, that's not a skunk. That's not even a possum. Some spider they got. From Walmart, robotic. Oh, WWE. What have you done to poor Rowan? Oh, Rowan. Go to AEW with Cody Lee. Please. Um, the exalted one. Just don't play with robotic spiders. Oh, again, I was just hoping for a skunk. The next match. Kyrie Sane taking on Shayna Baszler because Oscar heard her wrist or something, so Kyrie Sane uh, takes her place. Oh, these two Kyrie Sane and Oscar are so amazing. The Japanese they they, they speak is so brilliant. Um, it's great. It gives them personality. I almost wish they would just say easy peasy. Again, this is from K K Kanachan TV. Kanachan TV. Yeah. Kana Chun TV, I think. Kana Chan, I forget if it's Chun or Chen. But the, in the Japanese, both of them were speaking it. Obviously, those two are the only ones who knows what they're saying. Kerry Sane's kind of laughing and stuff. Uh, Asuka says, Asuka says it with such fever. It's so good to see. Uh, so Kerry Sane's taking on Shane and Baser. Shane and Baser comes out to her Tron. Uh, Kerry Sane, she does, she knows some collegiate wrestling. She must have learned something from her boyfriend. I think she's seen... I think she's not... Well, her husband. I think she's married to Evil. What was that, Io Shirai? I forget. I know she got married, though, recently. She's probably taking off next couple of weeks, so... I don't know what's going to happen. The woman's tag team belt, because they haven't done anything. The iconics, I still think, are in Australia. So Australia is still going through its wildfire issues. Again, that's a whole thing. I'll get into the brief, a brief of it. Um, European countries started to do fire control early. However, the problem is they have fire control over a very small space. Here in the U.S., they tried European fire control for like a space this big, but instead they realized. The space is like this big. Not the same thing. Again, Texas itself is, I think, larger than like some European countries. I know Texas, I, I want to say Alaska's, I know it's the biggest U.S. state. I think. It's always so hard to tell. I know population-wise it's not. I think landmass. It's either Alaska or Texas. It's like one or two. But, I mean, Alaska is the size of like two or three European countries. You can't manage 
like literally for Alaska, it might as well be a statewide national park. You can't manage that like you would two or three countries. Again, most of Australia is a statewide national park. You can't manage a continent size national park like like some like little piece of like a country. So it does not things don't work that way. So I think they're still in Australia. Or they're just having threesomes with Sean Spears. Who knows? <laughs> That's terrible sounding. Uh, but so so Kyrie again, she she knows her collegiate wrestling, a straight up single leg. Um near standing jujitsu by Kyrie Saint. She knows her stuff. So does Shannon Baser. Uh, Kyrie Saint does the foot sweep, so does Shannon Baser. Kind of good pretty back and forth. Shannon Baser has she's a big spine buster. She almost hit an Americana, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, Americana. Yeah, it was an Americana because Kyrie was on her back. If it was the other way, it was the, uh, um, not the Brock Law. Uh, Kimura. Yeah, Kimura and uh, Kimura is more so behind the back. Americana was kind of over the, over the shoulder. So that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, it has, it has a decent spine buster. Then she goes to work on the ankle, just stomps on the ankle. The heel hook leg breaker is always cool. Uh, Shauna, she, she got low bridge but stayed on top of the apron, came back, nailed Kyrie Sane. Again, she, Shauna got distracted a little bit by Asuka, but not, not for too long. And then Becky Lynch comes out in like a fake yellow big bird fur coat. Not the best look for her, but it was okay. I do like her, she was wearing her, her big goggles, so. So that was kind of cool to see. Uh, Becky comes out. She's old. She's on commentary. Uh, just for that, Shannon Baser says, okay. Uh, sun stop playing around. Goes after Kyrie Sane's ankles, and then she puts in the uh, uh, rear naked choke. The, 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 the Corofino, I, I don't know what it's called. It's a rear naked choke. On to Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane taps out. Shannon is like, yeah, I won. Guess what? I'm going to do it again because this is what I'm going to go to do to you. So, again, that match was fun. That was a – what did I give it? Oh, that was actually really good. Again, I, I enjoyed the character work. Character work was amazing. That was another surf and turf match. Then we had Rey Mysterio Jr. and Humberto Carrillo taking on Andrade and Angel Garza. Oh, this was so fun. Starts off, uh, Selena Vega's there. Selena Vega looks like a proper Latin woman should. She has a tied off sports bra, yoga pants, and thigh high boots. Yep. Uh, that whole Brazilian meltdown thing. Uh, Angel Garza goes to the crowd. Gets a kiss from Granny. Angel Cars is the best. I don't care what you say. Angel Cars is just surely entertaining. That starts off as a hockey fight. We go to a wrestling match and we see a hockey fight between Umberto Carrillo and Andrade. Again, remember Andrade put Umberto on the shelf with a hammerlock DDT onto this on concrete. Umberto then did the same thing to Andrade. So they just want to go at each other. They just want to fight. They want to pick a fight. With each other. Great. Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray got tossed to the barricade for all his efforts. I tell you what, that swing Angel Garza does when I think it was uh, Ray Mysterio. No, it was Umberto. Went for her crown on the other side. He just, he just took him by the legs. Whap! Because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. That's great. Umberto's, again, he did some weird flying shoulder tackle headbutt thing. No one knew what that was. That was kind of weird. Uh, then, oh! Uh, Andrade, that, 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 that chop hurt me. Ooh! Everyone was cringing that. That's good. When you can make your entire audience cringe at just the sound of, of a chop. Then they start going to Lucha mode! Uh, Garza, again, he gets his pants ripped off by Umberto. He tosses Umberto Carrero, but uh, Umberto Carrero actually drop kicks. Uh, tranquilo! Andrade. Umberto 
again, he's in the ring most of the time. Uh, however, Ray does, uh, Umberto gets dropped feet first. And Ray gets head. He gets tossed back in the ring. He does make the hot tag to Ray. Ray just flies. He does what Ray does. Uh, the seated senton, uh, Huracarana, and Tornado DDT. Ray Mysterio. You still got it. Andrade eventually got pulled out of the way by Zelina Vega. This means Umberto Carrillo again. Eat. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. So again, that goes there. Uh, eventually, Ray hits, uh, gets both Garza and Andrade for the 619 twice. So therefore, by my math, he hit the 1238. Uh, make sure my math's right, people, because I did that really quick on the fly. Umberto did that amazing moonsault. He's so high with that moonsault. That was amazing. Uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. and Umberto Carrillo win. I'll tell you what. This has been an amazing... This has actually been a really good Raw. Minus the one in Roman segment. Because that was just fake. Again, this match, Rey Mysterio and Umberto Carrillo versus Andrade and Angel Garza. Even though the faces won, Rey Mysterio and Umberto won. This, again, was a surf and turf match. Then Beth Phoenix came out to address her husband. And then uh, some guy <laughs> just shouted, RKO! RKO! Uh, Beth Phoenix I, like, was like shocked. People wanted her to be RKO'd. Listen, New York is a violent place. And there are vile people in New York. So you should expect people to say RKO to a woman. God knows what they would really do to Beth Phoenix. Um, so Randy Orton comes out. Give me a hug. Randy Orton gets night a hug, though. Uh, Randy Orton, this was the best promo ever. By Randy Orton. Uh, he gets cheered. It was heartfelt. He mentions Beth Phoenix kids. How he loves them. He actually gave a kind of almost near face reason. It's like, listen, the reason why I did what I did is because you enabled him, Beth. You enabled Edge to come back to wrestling. You, you don't give a drink to an alcoholic. You don't give money to a to a druggie. But and you never did any of that. But you let him I had to make sure that my brother could never be hurt by any of these people looking to make a name for themselves. So I put him out. I did you favor so that Edge can now go to the volleyball games, can go to the, the recitals, the play. He can be on the swing with his girls. He can have fun in the pool with his girls and you. And I did it all because I love you. Beth wasn't hearing any of this. She was breaking out in tears. Like, this was Randy Orton. When Randy Orton wants to be prime Randy Orton, oh, when Randy Orton's motivated, I've said this a couple times, when Randy Orton's motivated, when he's excited about doing something, he, uh, no, he is a seven-star match machine. It doesn't matter. When Randy Orton doesn't care, uh, free, freaking half of a ham, half of a piece of toast. But when Randy Orton wants to be Randy Orton, he's a seven-star machine when he wants to be. When he's properly motivated, when he's enjoying it, I'll tell you what. That that was promo of the year. Hands down. I, I don't care what AEW does. I don't care what Cody says. This this is this was promo of the year. The crowd cheers. Uh, Randy Orton, and then Beth just slapped him. She, he upset her, made her cry. Uh, turned around, Beth tried to kick him, and for Beth's effort, she ate the RKO. Oh, that was so great. 
and people cheered. Those sick, vile New Yorkers from the evil empire cheered a woman getting RKO'd. I, I thought only Philly fans were capable of that vile, disgusting drunkenness. But no, I guess New York people are too. Shame on you, New York. And I'll tell you what, this was this was an amazing go go home. Um, because right after this, like literally, you saw two people grab their coats, high high tailed it out of there. And that was awesome. It went on a little bit longer. Um, eventually, the locker room empties out. There's referees, uh, friends of Beth Phoenix, and Talia comes out. Again, Randy Orton, nowhere to be seen. Randy Orton, promo of the year. And that, that was an amazing close to Raw. Again, if, if you see any highlights of Raw, definitely see the Randy Orton promo at the end of this Raw. Everything else. Was 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 minus that stupid cage thing with Harper. That was terrible. Everything else was good. Randy Orton promo, pure gold. And I'll tell you what, just on the basis of that promo, Monday Night Raw was a surf and turf show. I'll tell you what, I don't know what else can be said that hasn't been said. I don't know what will be said tomorrow. But still, promo of the year for Randy Orton. Uh, a couple of news and notes about this week and into next week. Uh, eventually, sometime this week, I will put on my two-year anniversary show. I think it's officially March 5th. We'll probably get it on that date. I might get it set up early, but it'll be definitely posted either Wednesday night or Thursday morning early-ish. Uh, Tuesday, tomorrow night, I have to work, so there's no impact. So Wednesday night will be a double show. I'll be doing both. That's it. Ooh, oh. Yeah, I have to figure out what I'm But uh, Wednesday, I'll be doing my double header. I'll be doing both AEW and NWA that night. Uh, Thursday, Thursday is the 5th. So the 5th, I'm definitely posting up my two-year anniversary show where I give you an insight to the Hobo Studios here. Uh, Friday is going to be SmackDown. Saturday, no, I'm not doing anything. Sunday, the next week, Sunday, because I just realized this, uh, Sunday I'll be doing the be doing a review of Elimination Chamber. Monday, again, Monday Night Raw. Tuesday after work. Wednesday is going to be AEW and NWA. Thursday I have off. Friday SmackDown. And then Saturday the 14th. MXT finally comes back to Daytona Beach. And, well, even though I have to work, I don't have to work that late. So I'll be going to live NXT. More content for you guys. If someone asks for more content, you will be getting some more content. Especially whenever I can do live shows, that's it's so much better than than the stuff. And then I only have a little bit more than a month left then for my live stream. And I do actually plan on doing a lot more live streaming stuff because it's a lot, it's a little bit easier. A different setup, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so let's see. So everyone, here, say goodbye to the camera. And I shall see her. See you later. Show you how I kind of. Oh, there we go. Record. Everyone. Bye. So at this point, I hit stop button.